everyone. I want to show you how to solve this question. So notice what it's talking about. We have a weight of 55 Newton weight suspended by two wires shown in this figure here. So this weight is right here and it's being held up by these wires. And we have the magnitude of one of the wires given. So the magnitude of F1 is 39 Newtons. And then we're asked to find the angle right here formed between like let's call this maybe the ceiling and this uh, wire for F1 and we also know that this angle here with this other wire is 63 degrees and then we want the magnitude of this vector F2 okay so those are what we're looking for the angle alpha and then the magnitude of F2. So let's figure out how we're gonna answer this one. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna draw this into a coordinate system. I'll basically be transferring this image to the XY plane over here. And so I have, I'll stick to blue here, vector F2 like this, vector F1 maybe even more like that. This looks a little longer. And now because my angles are up here uh, labeled, I actually know that this one down here is 63 degrees. And then this one here is alpha. Okay, that comes from alternate interior angles. Pretty much we're doing this here. And so this angle with this line here, this angle matches this one. And then this angle matches this one. Okay, so alternate interior angles. Okay, so let's work with what we have so far and then we'll figure out how much more we need to take from our picture because we are gonna use the fact that that weight is hanging there and it's 55 uh, Newtons. So using what we know about our vectors, we can go ahead and say that this vector F1, if we break it apart, it has a horizontal and a vertical component. And so the horizontal component would be the magnitude of F1 times cosine of alpha. However, this is going to be negative because notice how we're drawing this. It's in the second quadrant. Okay, so it's because it's over here on the left of the y-axis, the horizontal component is negative. And that's because we're taking alpha to be this smaller angle here. If we were to be taking alpha to be this large angle, then we wouldn't have to put the minus sign because it'd be accounted for with when we take cosine. The vertical component is magnitude of F1 times sine alpha, okay? What else do we know? So F2, that one, if we break that down, we actually know um, that that one is, let's see, magnitude of F2 cosine uh, 63 degrees, and then magnitude of F2 sine 63. All right, now we actually know that the magnitude of F1 is 39, so let's go ahead and fill that in here. So that's going to be 39 here and here. Okay, so we need to solve for alpha. The question is basically asking us two things. What is alpha and what is the magnitude of F2? And in order to find two unknowns, we need two equations. So that's now where we're headed. So we don't have two equations at the moment. We actually just have two vectors. So we need to find two equations so algebraically we can solve this. So now what we're going to end up doing is we're going to add the vectors F1 and F2. And that's going to give us an equation to work with. That's actually going to lead to two equations so we can solve for our two unknowns. Now this picture is a little bit misleading the way the vectors are drawn because the resultant vector is actually going to be parallel uh, and on top of the y-axis here. And so with this, uh, the way that I drew them and the way they look in the image here, it's a little bit off because this should be lined up to where that's the diagonal. Okay, and it, it doesn't quite look like it is, but, but it is. Okay, so that is F1 plus F2. And so we actually know something about that. We know that the weight is this opposite vector pointing this way. And so that's a vector, we'll call it W for weight, 
and that's equal to the vector 0, negative 55. So that means that this other vector is going to be 0, positive 55. Okay, and so that means that when we add F1 plus F2, the result is 0, 55. And this is actually going to lead to two equations. So F1 plus F2, if we add up the two horizontal components, the sum should be 0. So that's equation number 1. Negative 39 cosine alpha plus magnitude of F2 cosine 63 is 0. And then equation 2 is the vertical components. So 39 sine alpha plus magnitude of F2 sine of 63 is equal to 55. And so now we have two equations with our two unknowns and we can solve these using some algebra and trig. Now real quick before we get into solving these, this system of equations, I just want to make a side note that this is not the only way to do this problem. What you could also have done instead of adding the two vectors is recognize the forces are in equilibrium. So if you call this um, W for the weight going down, this is another way to solve it. You could say F1 plus F2 plus W equals zero because um, the wires are holding up the weight, the weight's pulling down on the wires and everything's stationary. So that's another way to solve it and you would have gotten these same two equations to work with. So the rest of this is going to be some algebra and trig. The trig part's a little tricky, so we're actually just going to use a graphing calculator to get the angle value. Basically, you have a couple options. You can use the elimination method or substitution method. I'm going to go ahead and use the substitution method. So I'm going to solve this first equation for F2. So I'm going to add 39 cosine alpha to both sides of this equation. Okay, so the, you have a lot of choices for how to go about solving this system and this is just the choice I'm making. So I'm saying F magnitude of F2 equals 39 cosine alpha divided by cosine 63. And that's because after I added the 39 cosine alpha, I then just divided both sides by the cosine 63. So then what I'm doing, I'm using the substitution method. So I'm gonna sub this from equation one into equation 2 right here where there's the magnitude of F2. So in equation 2 I now have 39, so let's label this equation 2, sine alpha plus replace magnitude of F2 and that's going to be times sine 63 equals to 55 and so that's going to be 39 cosine alpha over cosine 63. Now from here you can simplify this using some trig um, facts but you don't really have to. I guess maybe I'll do one simplification step. We're just going to go ahead and graph this to get the zeros because it, it's tricky to solve this using um, trig. So this is cosine alpha and the fact that this is sine 63 over cosine 63 I'm just going to go ahead and call that tangent. So tangent of 63 degrees. So we'll just graph this and we'll find out what alpha should be. Alright, so I went over to Desmos website and I typed in our equation. However, 63 is a degree and the, by default this is, should be in radians. And so um, notice when I type that in, it doesn't show me anything for the graph. So if I just convert 63 degrees to radians by multiplying by pi over 180, then that's the graph. Okay, so this is the graph of the function. And basically, we're looking for what value of x makes this uh, happen, which equals 55. And so we're looking for when, when we hit the x-axis, really. And we hit it a few, quite a few times, but basically we want the smallest positive number, which is right here. And so I, some calculators let you click on it to find the zeros. This one, not, it's not letting me, so I'm just going to zoom in as much as I can because I need to get a few decimal places. And the answer wants me to just round to two decimal places, but for converting purposes, because this is in radians right now, I'm going to take more decimals than I need. So 1.3472 is the answer in radians, 
but I need to go ahead and put it back in degrees. So I'm going to times it by 180 divided by pi. And so that would be my answer for alpha. So it's 77.18 or 19, depending on how you enter it in. Um, and so that's alpha. Then the last thing we need to do is just get the magnitude of um, our vector F2. So we know alpha now, we can just plug it into our equation. And so let's just use this version here, since we've already solved for F2, and then plug in alpha right here. The fact that we got alpha was um, in degrees 77.1, we'll say 1.8, and then you'll find the magnitude of F2. All right, so a little bit tricky on this one, but hopefully this helps you understand it, and thanks for watching.